Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be back. <laughs> yeah, nice. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I've, 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 well, I'm going to miss this church when this is all over. Um, I think you know that my last Sunday with you is going to be next Sunday. So um, it's been a, what we thought was going to be a six month ride turned into an eight month ride and is now a nine month ride. So thank you for. Uh, having me in your presence as you sorted out what your pastoral leadership, how you're going to fill your pastoral leadership needs going forward, and I've really enjoyed my time um, here with you. Have a little official business we need to knock out this morning. Uh, the annual meeting of the congregation is today, following worship. We'll have election of council members, uh, the endowment trust committee, and others, the adoption of the 2022 budget, and other business brought to the congregation via the council will be discussed and adopted as needed. All voting members are invited, and you're a voting member if you're a confirmed member of Zion uh, who have contributed and communed uh, during the current or preceding calendar year. Please stand as you're able for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when did it not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and for the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe the glory of your Son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. 
Lord God, source of every blessing, you showed forth your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son, who brought gladness and salvation to his people. Transform us by the spirit of his love, that we may find our life together in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah, the 62nd chapter. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory, and you shall not be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be called a new name, excuse me. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called, my delight is in her, and your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall you, your builder marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The word of the Lord. A responsive reading is taken from Psalm 36. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. How priceless is your love, O God! All people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Our New Testament reading comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know, when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are a variety of gifts by the same Spirit, and there are varieties of service by the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but is the same God who activates all of them in every one. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by the one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to John, the second chapter. 
On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I was politically active during my college days, and one expression of that activism was that I volunteered to help with the campaign of my high school history teacher, U.S. history teacher, he ran a successful campaign for state representative in 1974 and would serve in that capacity until the state of Michigan imposed term limits sometime later. Anyway, over the course of the campaign, which included his primary election victory as well as his general election win, my organizational skills would be put to work. Specifically, I was the guy who organized the parties. <laughs> Not the political parties, the fun parties. So I was tasked, with, among other things, with organizing the election night party in November of 1974, which for our campaign would prove to be a victory party. It really wasn't that tough to do, but one of the details I had to attend to was the ordering and delivery of a keg of beer. I did so the afternoon of the election. I had worked in a party store a few years earlier, and so I knew all of the steps that one had to take to make sure that the keg was cooled, tapped properly, and ready to go. But as the evening moved along, it was becoming apparent that the keg was getting low. I must have underestimated the crowd, or at least the crowd's appetite for beer. And then the keg blew. We were out of beer. But I was already out the door with a friend. We knew of a store close to our location, and we had a suitable vehicle to transport a keg. And within minutes, we were back with another one. We carefully walked it in, put it on ice, asked people to give it 10 minutes to chill, and we were back in business. No worries. So while running out of beer at a campaign party was a temporary inconvenience, it wasn't a crisis. Running out of wine at a wedding feast in Jesus' day, on the other hand, was a major crisis for the folks throwing the party. Jesus lived in what's um, come to be called an honor-shame culture. For one thing, marriages were often arranged to enhance one's status in the community. For another, honor brought wealth in that particular culture. So a lot more is riding on a successful wedding feast besides everyone having a good time. It would be a major crisis, not just an embarrassment or an inconvenience, to have run out of wine. It would bring shame on the family throwing the wedding feast, and it would potentially unravel the whole point of having the event to start with, to establish one's honor or enhance one's honor in the community. So the mother of Jesus, and note that for some reason John doesn't use the name Mary, the mother of Jesus goes up to Jesus and points out the problem, and at first 
Jesus seems to be dismissive of her. But undeterred, the mother of Jesus goes to the servants and hints that they are about to get some orders. And then Jesus goes to work. He tells the servants, fill these huge stone jars with water. And the result is wine. Good wine, not the cheap stuff. And a lot of wine, more than enough. Crisis averted. And not just a crisis averted, but a family saved from shame. And a family restored to community. And that's what Jesus' miracles and signs did for people. Miracles and signs restored people to their communities. In his miracles, he helped people overcome physical and social barriers. And in this sign in our gospel this morning, he helps people overcome a potentially damaging social cultural barrier. John chooses to call this water to wine transformation a sign. It's a sign because it points beyond itself to something or more, most, more importantly somebody else. It points beyond quality and plentiful wine to the one who is the source of life and joy and salvation. Jesus, the source of life, the source of joy, the source of salvation for us and for the world. And through this sign, Jesus restores the joy and celebration of the wedding feast and keeps the bridegroom's family connected to the community at large. Connected instead of ostracized or shunned. Connected and restored. The prophet Isaiah this morning invokes the image of a marriage to promise restoration to those who had been in exile during the Babylonian captivity. Many, but not all, who had been in exile have now returned to Judah and Jerusalem. It's not clear if the building of the second temple is underway or if it's just being anticipated. It is known that post-exilic period lingered longer than anyone had expected or hoped, that it took a while for religious and political institutions to rebuild, and there was also considerable corruption. So the people return, but they return feeling abandoned, feeling forsaken, having been cut off. And in response to their lament, the Lord promises restoration and renewal. You shall no longer be termed forsaken, and your land shall no longer be termed desolate. But you shall be called, my delight is in her, and your land married. Your God will rejoice over you. The people will be restored to their land, but most importantly, be restored to relationship with God. But even then, the new Judah won't totally resemble the old one in every respect. Judah wasn't the only group or nation that's encountered disruption or exile and then eventual restoration and renewal. The church is certainly facing disruption and disconnection right now. This pandemic has ushered in any number of new realities for faith communities that will hold for some time to come. One reality, the one that I'm wrestling with a lot these days, just in my head, is um, that most congregations now have at least two communities. They have the community that gathers physically in a place and the group that gathers virtually thanks to platforms such as Facebook, YouTube, and in a few places, Zoom. In conversations I've had with leaders of congregations, um, there's a yearning to bring people back to the virtual, from, to bring the people in the virtual space back to the physical community. I had an interview for an interim that I'm not taking um, where the entire conversation was how do we get people to come back? That was the sole focus of that conversation. But that's not likely to happen anytime soon. And if congregations continue to offer virtual worship connections, the virtual community is likely to be with us a long time, if not forever. So what does restoration of a faith community look like post-pandemic 
if there's both a physical community and a virtual one? How will congregations minister effectively to both groups? Will there be boundaries, and if so, will they be flexible and fluid, or will they become rigid? And what will connect and unify these communities? There are no ready answers to these questions. These will be questions for faith communities to wrestle with, to think about, to study, and perhaps most importantly, to pray about in the coming months and years. But in the meantime, we are invited to trust that God continues to renew and restore creation and to trust that God continues to renew and reform the church. Now, the story of the wedding at Cana in Galilee is fun because in that story, the restoration is immediate. Water becomes wine. Problem solved. But we would do well to listen to the prophetic words uttered during and after the exile as well. And to listen to stories about God's people wandering in a wilderness. Because often those words and those stories speak to those realities of disconnection and disruption that we encounter in our lives and in our history. And we are reminded that restoration and reconnection often take time. But we can be also assured by the account of the wedding at Cana in Galilee that Jesus is our ultimate source of joy and life and salvation, the Jesus who promises us abundant life, abundant life symbolized not only by a lot of wine, but quality wine as well. Commentator Elizabeth Johnson reminds us that abundant life does not mean a life of ease, comfort, and luxury, and it does not mean an absence of sorrow or suffering. But she goes on to say that it does mean that in Jesus we have an abundant, extravagant source of grace to sustain us, grace that is more than sufficient to provide where we fall short and to give us joy even amid sorrow and struggle. Abundant life means that in Christ we are joined to the source of true life, life that is rich and full and eternal, life that neither sorrow nor suffering nor death itself can destroy. May we trust, may we trust in this promise of abundant life in Christ as we confront any or all of the challenges that, are, that we're facing in our lives and in this congregation. Amen.
profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended from the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the lasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. By your Spirit, activate within your church gifts of faith, healing, and prophecy. Unite those who profess your name across congregations, denominations, and geographical boundaries. Open our hearts to recognize and celebrate your miracles. God of grace, prayer. your creation reflects your generosity. Bless farmers, farm workers, orchard keepers, ranchers, and all who tend the abundance of the land. Protect food and water sources from destruction that all can eat and drink and be satisfied. God of grace, hear our prayer. By your spirit, grant wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to those who hold leadership positions at any level. Direct policymakers toward compassionate decisions that build up safe and just communities. Lead all authorities in seeking and serving the common good. God of grace, As Jesus provided generously in the moment of need, provide generous gifts of healing for those in need, especially Jane, Sherry, Roy, Lois, and Robert. Provide abundantly for all who are hungry and thirsty, all seeking shelter, and all who seek peace. God of grace. You bless us through the spiritual gifts of the saints who have gone before us, We give thanks for the life of Martin Luther King Jr. and all who have modeled the way of courageous faith. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Also with you. Please share that peace with your neighbor.
Our offertory response today for this season of Epiphany is 1087 in the blue book. The words are up here. We sing it with gusto. Please stand. Glory to God, whose goodness shines on me, and to the Son, whose grace has pardoned me, and to the Spirit, whose love has set me free, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O holy God. You are the life and light of all. By your powerful word, you created all things. Through the prophets, you called your people to be a light to the nations. Blessed are you for Jesus, your Son. He is your light, shining in our darkness and revealing to us your mercy and might. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his preaching and healing, his dying and rising, his promise to come again, we await that day when all the universe will rejoice in your holy and life-giving light. By your Spirit, bless us and this meal, that refreshed with this heavenly food, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, we're going to continue the practice that's worked fairly well for us, I think. We're going to have one um, uh, line down the center aisle. Uh, Craig will usher you to the middle. We're trying to keep one line for distancing. Come to me for bread, and then to an assisting minister uh, for wine in return by the side. Um, uh, the bread's gluten-free, I think you know that already, and the grape juice is red and it's in the center of the tray. Come to God's table, there is a place for you and enough for all.
stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And just a reminder once again that our annual congregational meeting uh, uh, meets in the, the parish hall following worship this morning. And now may God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in, today and forever. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. 